yeah, this is a relatively short talk about hyperlog logs with Node.js and Redis. It's not a work presentation. I'm just lazy, so I stole their uh, slide master. So first off, what is a hyperlog log? I'm probably assuming that a lot of people haven't used one or come across one yet. Um, and it's not to do with logging. Um, it's actually an algorithm. And what it does is it does one thing, and it does it reasonably well, but it's not perfect. Uh, and that's actually an advantage, and we'll look at why. And what it does is it solves what's called the count distinct problem. So imagine I'm like Twitter, and I want to know how many different users have liked a post. Then we have like a set of user IDs that have all liked the post. And we have a count of how many things are in that set. Um, if I am an ad agency or something, I want to know maybe how many different IP addresses have clicked on an ad on a web page. Same thing. We have a set of unique things, and we want to count them. Um, we are, for example, if we're Instagram, we might want to know how many unique images have been uploaded today. And now our unique things are quite big because they're images. Um, and we, again, want to know how many distinctly different ones there were. And we'd normally use a mathematical set for that. And that's not always the best answer. So we're going to have a look at how we might use a hyperlog log with Node for that. What we're going to do is look at a uh, mechanism for doing traffic surveys. So imagine we wanted to count distinct vehicle license plates that went through an intersection in a day for some reason, like we're doing city road planning or something. Um, and the obvious way that we might want to do that, if we were building this in, say, Node.js, and it was running on some little device that sits at an intersection with a license plate reading camera, is we just used a JavaScript set because it's literally perfect for this application. Um, it's built for recording unique collections of things without duplicates. So every time I add something to the set with my saw plate uh, function there, it's going to get added to the set. And if that license plate has already been seen before, it's not going to get added a second time because the set doesn't allow for duplicates. And if I want to know how many different vehicles have passed by this intersection or this traffic light or whatever it is today, then I have a how many seen function there that just simply uses the size property on the set and says, how many, how many things did we put in the set today? Um, and I can call those two functions. So I add a couple of license plates there at lines seven and eight. And then I could add like maybe a half million other license plates. And then I can ask it, how many have you seen? And it's going to say 500,002. And this is perfect, right? There's no problem with this. We added 500,002 different things. And we've remembered that we counted 500,002 different things. This is exactly what we want to do. Uh, but there's actually a couple of problems with this perfect implementation. Um, the first one is it doesn't scale. So if we went from 500,000 things to 5 million things or 10 million things, or each of those things was a megabyte long, then in order to know that we've not seen a license plate before, we have to remember all the license plates in the set. So the amount of storage or memory or database space or whatever we're going to back this with that we're using is unpredictable and can get out of control very, very quickly. Um, and all of that is down to because we said we wanted an absolute right number. So we have to remember all of these things um, to get that number. The other problem with this in this case is these license plates can be associated with a person through the DMV. And we know where this process here is running. It's inside a traffic camera at a given location. So now we've associated a person with a vehicle with a location um, when all we really wanted to do was count how many different different vehicles pass through our intersection just so we know, for example, whether to add another lane or whether to put a bike lane in there or whatever the plan is that we're, we're looking at. So there's two problems with the set is storage can get out of control in order to get a perfect result. And we've got a potential privacy problem of we remember all of these license plates. So given those are our problems, what does a hyper log log algorithm do for us and why might we use one? Um, the first bit of good news is it has a very, very similar programming interface to a set. So it's very easy to drop into our code. And we'll look at that shortly. Um, here there's a count mechanism and there's a add mechanism. The huge benefit here with the hyperlog log algorithm is it's way more space efficient than the set. So every time I added a license plate to my set, I'm chewing through more and more memory, database storage, whatever it is. 
because I'm adding that unique thing that we have to remember to get that accurate count. A hyperloglog, log, instead of adding the thing, adds a hash of the thing. So it does a mathematical function on the thing, reduces it down to a much smaller size, and then compresses it, remembers it's seen something that matches that hash. Now, this is a benefit in terms of we save a lot of storage space or memory space, and we'll look at how much shortly. Uh, but it's also a downside because we'll get clashes. So license plates that hash to the same thing, we're going to get those ending up as a count of one rather than three, four, or how many different things it is. So in order to save a lot of memory and to solve our problem of having to constantly rescale this thing, um, we give up some accuracy. And in some cases, that's OK. So for like traffic planning, um, we want to know relative at each intersection how many vehicles or different vehicles pass through it. We don't need an exact count. Um, good enough is good enough. And then there's both a benefit and a trade-off here in that if we swapped our set for a hyperloglog log algorithm, we can't get the things back out anymore because they've been hashed. So in the license plate case, this is beneficial because it solves our problem of tracking all of these license plates and having somebody potentially able to see them in the future. We're not tracking those license plates. We're essentially one way hashing them like we would a password. And dumping them in something. And the only thing we can do is then count that thing. So we don't have a situation now where someone can just say, oh, here are all the license plates that went through this intersection on this day, because you can't get them out anymore. That's also a downside for some use cases. So if you were doing something like credit card fraud detection or something, and you had like a set of transactions, you absolutely want to know the right you know, absolute accuracy. You want to know that. And you probably do want to get those values out again. So trade-offs, not always the best swap for a set, but quite often, like in this case with traffic management, it would be. Um, the other trade-off here is that generally hyperlog logs, not something that built into programming languages. So the set there, we just used the ES6 or the node or JavaScript sets built in, we can just use it. If we wanted to persist that, it would be pretty easy. We just use any old database and have a primary value for the license plate and then count how many things are in there. Um, Hyperloglog, log, a little bit more complicated, but again, the benefit is we, um, we save a lot of space. So we need an implementation of that. And there's several available, or you can make your own. Um, I don't recommend that you make your own. This is just some math that I don't understand that I pulled off of Wikipedia that basically approximates how to make an add and account function that's efficient storage-wise and gives you an approximation of how many things it's seen. Uh, so the long and the short answer is don't make your own user library or get some product that uses that has this built in if you want to use this. And one of those products, um, there are several libraries available that do hyperlog logs, but one interesting product that has this built in um, and works with a bunch of languages, including Node and Python and pretty much any language you you can think of, is the Redis key value data store. So. That allows us to store against a key in a data store, which is in memory, so it's very fast, a hyperloglog log count. So we can put things into the hyperloglog log and we can count them. And it's in memory, it's very, very fast. And we can store several of them, hundreds of them, against different keys in, in the data store. The advantage of this is the hashing algorithm that it uses means that no matter how many license plates or whatever it is I want to put in there, I'm never going to go above 12K of storage or memory used. So this is good if you're doing something like a license plate reader or something where you can't predict how much data will come in, so you can't really scale for it. And you don't really need that perfectly accurate number anyway. You just need something that's good enough. So how does this then work with our uh, code example? So if we took out the set, so we swap out perfect accuracy, but scalability problems and privacy problems for something that has reasonable accuracy, but no scalability and privacy problems. And we want to use Redis as the implementation of that because hyperlog log isn't built into uh, JavaScript. Then we have slightly more complicated code, but it's basically the same thing. So starting off, we first connect to Redis at the first couple of lines. And then we define a key name. So we're going to call that plates key. It's basically a key in the key value store where we're going to store our count. 
And then we still have our two functions. So the saw plate function now just calls a Redis command called pf add, and that's going to add the license plate that we passed to it into the hyperlog log that's stored at a certain key in the data store. And the same as the set, it's either going to store it and increment the count by one, or it's going to um, not store it and the count will stay the same as it is. And then our how many scene function works pretty much exactly the same as calling the set.size, except for uh, we're going to call Redis command called pf count, and that's going to say, hey, the hyperlog log that's stored at the key plates, how many things have you seen? Then from line 10 down, we pretty much have the same code. Um, we are adding license plates there. Then I can add 500,000 other license plates. And then I say, oh, how many have you seen? So with the set, we knew every single time it was going to be 500,002 because the set is perfectly accurate, but has this problem with runaway storage for large data sets and has this other problem with privacy in this case. So the hyperlog log in this case, when I ask it, how many have you seen, it comes back and it says 499,717. So it's in a reasonable ballpark of 500,002. And you'll find that if you use different hyperlog log uh, implementations, you'll get trade-offs between how good that count is versus how much storage is used. So in our case, our 500,002 items that we've stored, uh, we are trading off some accuracy in the count for the fact that we've used 12K of storage for this. And if I added another 10 million license plates, we'd be using 12K of storage. And if I added another 10 million license plates, we'd be using 12K of storage. So we don't have a runaway problem, but we do have an approximate answer rather than an accurate one. So where would approximate answers be useful? Um, largely in things where you're looking at trends or um, uh, just comparing things with other things without needing to know exact values, basically, so relative relative values. So if you imagine we had, if this was the code for a, a traffic camera sensor and it was at a given intersection and its key in Redis was something that identified that intersection, so maybe like 10th and market, and then the next one would be like 9th and market or whatever, if you put a load of these through a city and had them all reporting stuff back, they would all generate about 12Ks worth of storage, no matter how many different vehicles went through them. And then you could use that information and without compromising people's privacy, because we don't know their license plates, it's all been hashed away. You can say how many were at each intersection. If you know where the cameras are located, you could do something like build a heat map out of that. Um, so, um, I have a video online where we actually look at, in more detail, building one of those heat maps with a bunch of camera-like objects and hyperlog logs around San Francisco. And I'll post that in the uh, in the chat afterwards and on Slack. So that was really all I had. So I mean, the takeaway really quickly is if you find yourself doing something where you have to count lots of things, and the lots of things might be a huge number of things, or they might be very big things, or a huge number of very big things, then you might want to consider swapping in a hyperlog log for a set or a database table, traditional database table, in order to avoid runaway uh, storage requirements and potentially to solve a privacy problem. And that's, that's it. Thank you very much.